Good afternoon, Money.net, live from the New York Stock Exchange, Drive Wells, so very own Jay Woods. How are you, Jay? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Stephen? I'm good. Uh, we had a little bit of a, a hurricane issue uh, last week, but uh, got through that. And the other thing I think that was a big storm was was Wall Street itself. I mean, we saw like, what, six, seven, eight days of just straight down and then um, – on the back side of that, the last two days, we've had 1,600-point move in the Dow. What's up with that? It's been crazy. First of all, I, I'm glad you're all right. I know you, you weathered that storm, so uh, we, we talked through it. Uh, I'm glad to have you back live. Uh, but, yeah, it's been a whirlwind. Uh, we finished September. Listen, you and I talked about this endlessly. Historically, what September brings to the table, it was the worst yeah. September since 2002, 2003. Wow. So it lived up to its name. And then what do we talk about October? It's the most volatile month there is. So we we entered October kind of like we entered September. I don't know if you remember that far back, but we had a big rally to start that month. Um, and a few things were catalysts to this one. Uh, one, it was rumors. There was no specific news. There were rumors down here. Okay, the Fed's going to pivot. We saw what happened in Europe, and uh, you know they they rescinded that tax cut that was going to be you know a big news story over there. And people rallied like, oh, they're going to pivot now. We're going to pivot over here. No one's come out and said that. In fact, one of the Fed presidents daily came out and said, quote, resolute at raising to restrictive territory today. So that's still very hawkish. Uh, that may have been why we sold off a little bit, uh, but we're rallying back. And then as far as technical things that we saw, everything was bearish. You, you don't bottom on good news. You bottom at the worst news. And what did we see? AAII sentiment. Two weeks in a row below 60% bearish. Never happened in the history of the index. In fact, it was only the sixth bearish reading of over 60%. We hit it back to back weeks. Uh, put call ratio spiked to ridiculous levels. Short interest rising. Uh, then you throw in the seasonal factors that we've always talked about and you got your September bottoming out. RSI levels oversold in all three major indexes. So there was a reason to rally. And when you have rallies in bear market, we had an epic rally. We were up two and a half percent Monday and Tuesday. Under a 200-day moving average has only happened 11 other times, and guess what? A year later, 10 of those times, we were up, and it's an average of 19%. So well, this is just like the biggest relief rally we've seen. Now the next question is, is it sustainable? We'll see. Are you saying this is a bull trap or a bear trap? Well, it looks like we may have fallen into a bear trap when we capitulated below that 36-36 level. Right. But I said capitulate. Did we really capitulate? Did we? We, we got down to 3,600. We Good paused point. below 3,636 one time. One time does not a trend make. And then what did we do? We spiked back. We rallied. That's a bear trap. So, yes, uh, when I talk about bear traps, that's when you feel like, oh, we're taking that next leg lower. We did make a 52 week low. But now we're back. We're back above 3,636. And the level I'm watching. It is 3727 now. Why? Because that was the gap up yesterday. Uh, we actually tested it. We got the 3722, then quickly got back above 3727, and we're holding it. Why do we want that to hold? Because it means that yesterday's rally meant something. We didn't give it all back just yet. We're we're, we're holding a level where we gapped above, and constructively. Let's digest these last two days of gains. It was insane. We had upside volume 95% of the S&P yep. 500 was up two days in a row. That, that's an epic rally. Now we have to hold on and look and see what economic data comes and, and possibly brings us higher or makes us retest again. But you make a good point. I mean, the option market, I've never seen the option market this crazy, this much volume ever in my life um and it seems to me that it's not stopped right um this morning we had the dow fell about 360 points almost 400 points and here we are only down 100 points now you know it seems to me that the option market is really leading the way here yeah i i agree and when you see that much sentiment go negative the contrarian, the market maker in me, you go the other way. And what happens when you have that much negative sentiment and we start to the rally, there's a squeeze. So we got that excessive V bottom ish looking feel to what's going on. Now, is it an official V bottom? We'll find out. We'll see if we can keep that momentum going. I would be surprised. Uh, we rally back too much more, but uh, we're back above some key levels. We can breathe again and we can wait for the Fed.
Um, is this one of those places where you could just have to hold your nose and, as I always say, stick my fingers in the ears and just buy all the dips? Yeah, I, I think this is a dip worth buying. I, I've been consistent in saying that with you. Um, I thought if we retested, it could be quick, it could be sharp, and uh, thankfully it, it rebounded. So um, there are a lot of big names on sale right now, uh, but it's cliche. It's a stock picker's market. There are some leaders within the sector, like you look at healthcare. That is a defensive sector in an environment like this, but United Healthcare is head and shoulders above everybody else in yep. a spot, uh, you know, from a, from a tactical level. And now look at energy. Energy's back leading again, uh, but it's not bringing the market down as it leads. So that's a positive. There, there are a lot of positive, you know, green shoots, if you will, that we're seeing to come out of these last two and a half days. But let's pump the brakes a little bit. We got a lot to go on, and I think the Fed will lead the way. Uh, CPI next week will be crucial because guess what happened in September? Uh, September, we were off to a good start until that CPI number came in a little hot. And uh, uh oh, watch out. So uh, uh, I, I like to think we've avoided uh, a nice downdraft for now, but we got a lot of data to digest and a lot of Fed speak to get through. So let's enjoy this and see where we go from here speaking of the fed speak uh this week uh, we saw and yes in the course this morning we saw poland doing it um world bank and imf told all the world to chill out on the raising the rates uh to take a pause poland did it poland was expected uh, to raise rates by 25 basis points and did not they said no, nothing you know, they'll say flat on this um that was a nice pivot for poland is there something different here that we want to pivot or not well, first of all, that, that's great content. You're not going to hear about Polish rates anywhere else but on Money.net. So good <laughs> job to you, Steve. But no, the point of it is, is exactly what you're looking at. You, we're supposed to be the leaders. And the Fed has, has said we're not going to worry about the global effects yeah. and we're not going to be pressured by what happens in other economies. But do you really believe it? They, they say they don't follow the stock market. Do you really believe it? If the market continues to go down like it had, it will raise eyebrows. I think what they're looking at, uh, mortgage rates at 16-year highs. There is a lot of negative things in this economy. Right. Has inflation peaked? Has it turned over a little bit? Yeah, it's getting there. Um, uh, but the unemployment data on Friday, that's a huge tell. Uh, right. If we still have a strong jobs number and strong unemployment information, then they, they may remain hawkish. And it's something we talk about. You don't root for those numbers to be negative, but you know, a negative number showing that there is a rise in unemployment will show that the scales are balancing when it comes to economic data. So will we take cues from other leaders, other nations? Eh, maybe, but I, I think we're more worried about what's going on at home. And the, the common theme they've been running through Powell over the last few weeks, um, of course, the past month, was that we were going to feel pain. Um, do you feel that we felt the pain enough? I know that my housing prices have come down. I know that mortgage rates have gone up. I know that inflation is still at the at the pump. I know inflation is still in the grocery stores. Uh, we just saw nine dollars with a carton of eggs. I mean, oh my goodness. Um, is that the kind of pain that that Powell's really want us to see, or or is it something else besides that? Well, you know, it is painful, and and for you know, clearly the the Fed doesn't go shopping or, or pump gas in their cars as regularly as we do, right. uh, the effects are being felt. Uh, it's just not in the one metric that everybody likes to focus when you label a recession. Uh, you know, it's, it's the unemployment numbers. And that is, is something that, you know, you hear about hiring freezes. There have been pockets of, of layoffs. You know, Goldman Sachs, the most notable firm to announce layoffs recently. Nothing sizable, but it, it's starting to have that feel like, okay, we're doing hiring freezes, we're readjusting it, come to your end, and, and the big companies will look at their numbers and they'll, they'll reassess, and if they're not meeting their numbers, guess what they have to do? They have to cut costs, and unfortunately, that could lead to an un uptick in unemployment, and that's the pain that you'll feel. Now, we, we talk recession, we talk, you know, is it official? Uh, no, but, you know, the definition of recession to you and me is when your neighbor loses your job. The depression is when you lose your job. Um, <laughs> right. I don't think we're at that point yet, but um, yeah, there, there have been a lot of warning signs of it, and uh, we'll, we'll see where we go. One of the stocks you had posted for me was uh, one of my favorite things to eat on the planet. Uh, that's French fries. You were talking about Lamb and Weston. Wow, yeah, Lamb and Weston. People don't realize uh, they're the biggest French fry maker out there. You go to McDonald's, 
uh, you, uh, you will you'll be eating their products. And they reported earnings today. And I thought it was very interesting for two, two reasons. One, technically, it made a new high and it failed. Let's see how it closed. But, uh, you know, you don't want to really be buying that on strength unless it's above $83. It's had a tremendous run. But they issued guidance, and uh, they said that restaurant, uh, restaurant goers are starting to slow down. Spending on these items are starting to slow down. Uh, so, you know, we, we may get thinner, but it may not be for the reasons we want to. But I thought it was an interesting earnings uh, to, you know, talk about how things are doing economically. And the reason they beat, because they did beat, is because they passed that on to the consumer. So once again, is the consumer going to pay for those French fries? Well, so far they have. But we'll see what kind of economic impacts it has going forward. They did warn. They did guide. So uh, it's a small unknown company, uh, except maybe to you and I, but it's definitely worth keeping an eye on how that stock reacts. And technically, it, it couldn't hold above a breakout. So I'm a little concerned, but we'll see where it closes today. It's obviously the, that uh, Mr. Putin is not been eating French fries uh, because Ukraine is getting a little bit uh, wonky again. Um, he had an annexation uh I guess a meeting saying, "Hey, we we own these new places." Um, is this going to affect defense stocks here? They're going to keep pushing higher. Well, the defense stocks didn't follow through like I would hope oh. to, but given the global, uh, you know, situations, I think defense is a good place to hide right now. It's been not it's it's not down for the year. Let's just put it that right. way. So anything not down is up, uh, except for energy, of course. Uh, but the defense stocks will remain something that we're going to keep a close eye on, given the global concerns, given the escalations and possible future escalations, not just in that region, but possibly other reg regions, as North Korea fired a missile over Japan. Yes. Uh, South Korea and the U.S. last night, they, they did some tests of their own. So um, there's a lot of war gaming going on, and that, that tends to be good for the defensive sector. Uh, whether or not it'll have a bigger impact on things, w we'll see how it plays out. You know, it's interesting because we saw the Seventh Fleet, the USS Reagan, moving around from Yokohama back into the Straits of Taiwan. Um, two theater war here, right? Um, that's not good for global macroeconomics. What do you say? Yeah, it isn't. Uh, but uh, sadly, there's an expression, and uh, Art Cash and uh, legend down here is mm. better at, at telling these stories. You buy when the missiles are in the air, uh, and you sell off, you know, at fear that they may be shot, uh, because basically. If, if there is an escalation, people are going to panic, and that's when you want to be on the other side of that trade. You never hope for something like that to happen, but it's an old adage that sadly we have history uh, on our side to see that, yes, uh, we, we do sell off when, when things get a little crazy. Let's hope we don't get to those places, but there, there is a lot of uh, warmongering going on out there. And we just been asked about the dollar. It's the strength of the dollar has been so strong um, against foreign currencies that when the dip happened on Liz Trust, uh, I lost. Um, I picked that uh, pound up at one oh five. Oh, there, good. Okay, sorry, that, we just had a misconnection. I hear you now talking about the dollar. Yeah. Uh, well, the yeah. dollar's been driving everything. Uh, we finally had the dollar capitulate a little bit to the upside. We've got a nice pullback, and if it can stabilize. Or, or go a little bit lower, that would be good for, you know, all these big companies, especially tech that has been, you know, the, the most beaten down sector, the semis and the tech sector. Uh, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see if that dollar pullback was just a natural pullback in a very strong uptrend, or it could be the beginning of, you know, a topping formation, which would be great. A pause in, in the rise of the dollar would be good for everybody right now. All right, live from the New York Stock Exchange, Jay Woods from Drive Wealth, man. Thank you so much for your knowledge, and we'll see you right back here next week. All right, great seeing you, Stephen. Thanks. Thanks, Jake.